Joining us from New York City are film writer and award-winning director, Tim Che, visionary leader and praise and worship missionary, Zenzo Matoga, senior pastor of Grace Tabernacle Christian Center, elder John David Wright, and winner of the NAACP award for the color purple, Jeanette Biondell. God has a witness in all areas of life. Um, he does not ignore anybody. He makes sure that everybody's covered. He makes sure that everybody will hear the gospel before they have to face Jesus Christ someday. And um, because of that, he uniquely um, equips people with skills and talents to go out into the world. And the next person you're going to meet is one such person. His name is Tim Che. And he... Um, He's a, a, a movie f a producer and a, a writer, and he's, he's um, created several different films. Um, he, um, he's uh, trained in Harvard. He used to be a devout atheist. Um, one of the films that he did, um, it's called the, the Genius Club. He has a new movie out called Suing the Devil. And I'm sure they pulled on, on some of his uh, training in, in, in law school. And um, we're going to show a little clip of it, and then I'm going to introduce you to him, a very uniquely gifted man who's reaching out into the Hollywood community and creating films for the Christian community as well as anybody else so that you can see the gospel n not just as we hear in music, set to music, but also set in a theatrical setting so that we can s not just hear it set to music, but we could see it in a theatrical setting as well. So check this out, uh, Suing the Devil. Luca Bryan versus Satan. You're suing Satan. It's being billed as trial of the century, being seen by audiences around the world. Who is Jesus Christ? I created noise! What's the matter? Don't shut off the music of hell! Tim Chay. Thank you. So, you're in Harvard. You went to Harvard. Now, how did you wind up being an atheist? Well, the, yeah, I know. Seeing you know, that you I, came out of this spiritual heritage. I know, exactly. You know, I'm like a fallen away seed. Um, I, uh, I followed God for a while, but I fell back in a big way, Carmen. I, um, you know, and all my friends here, you know, who came as well know about my history. But um, I'm just like the backslidden guy, you know, and I backslid it all the way to hell. So um, it was a really bad time, but I backslid it to the point where I didn't believe in God anymore. And, uh, you know, when I was at Harvard, I just told people, you know, Christians are idiots. And uh, I was an idiot myself. <laughs> so so you're, you're putting all this together. And, and to compound that, you're doing Christian films. Yeah. So that makes it even harder because the, uh, the distribution is much more difficult. The acceptance in the public is much more difficult. At what point did you realize you're, you're, you're breaking through the barrier and you're becoming full-time successful doing Christian films? Well, you know, uh, we were making Christian films uh, back in 2001, Carmen. So we were doing it before um, the whole Mel Gibson, you know, revolution of Passion of the Christ. And we need to pray for Mel, by the way, because he's going through a lot of struggles. And that's because of the devil. The devil's on Mel. But um, he, that Passion of the Christ really broke through for all of us. When Passion of the Christ hit, it broke the way for the Kendricks to make, you know, Fireproof Facing the Giants. And the star of Facing the Giants is in our film by the way, so. But uh, it really helped. It was a revolution that we needed in Hollywood um, for people in Hollywood to really stand up. But even though Passion of the Christ still, still made, you know, 370 million, was number eight all time, Carmen, the studio executives still said, we don't want to make Christian films because we don't want to promote um, Christ. I mean, that's, you know, you know, Jesus Christ says, if they hated me, they'll hate you. You know, and unfortunately, we want to be popular so bad, but that, the, you know, it's like you're going up against swimming upstream because you'll never be popular in this world until Christ returns. Well, you know, it's, it's, it's amazing how, how far somebody will go to show how against Jesus they really are. Yeah. Even when, when Hollywood people will 
walk away from a proven commodity that can pull in hundreds of million dollars because they yeah. don't want to have anything to do with Jesus, yeah. that's a form of insanity. There's a price that you pay. Yes. What price do you feel that you've had to pay because you took a stay for Jesus? Oh, yeah, plenty, Carmen, plenty. Um, but let me just preface by saying this. Um, the Lord did not give us a spirit of fear. Right. but of power, love, and a sound mind. When you go into that, you don't care what the media has to say. Right. And I know the LA Times has written terrible things about our film. If for some reason, Christianity or Christians can just be punching bags, you know? And people don't realize when we show love, and love them back, it's supernatural. I mean, how, how else can, can like these writers bash me and I just say, Lord, forgive them? You know, they don't know what they do and love on them. I mean, that's supernatural love that you can't get in this world. Certainly not, not me, you know, as a secular guy, I would have strangled him, you know, but <laughs> as a Christian who loves Jesus Christ, that's supernatural, and that cannot be explained. Mm. The, um, the, the, the warfare in Hollywood, and when I say Hollywood, it's not just the city of Hollywood, it was more, almost a concept of, of Hollywood. The warfare, when it comes to the arts, yeah. is like nothing else I've ever seen in any form of art. Yeah, that's true. And a lot of it, I, I, I've really had a lot of t time to think about it, because John the Baptist was stuck in prison, and he says to uh, um, his disciples, he says, uh, go ask Jesus. Are you the one or shall we look for another? Right. Here's a guy who, he, he was there when the dove came down. He, he heard the voice come out of heaven, <laughs> and he's wanting to know, are you, are you really him? Right, yeah. Jesus says, go tell John not only what you hear, but what you see. Amen. Sight, sound. Right. A film is sight and sound. Wow. The greatest way to communicate a message is sight and sound. A film is sight and sound. What you do is sight and sound. Amen. The best way to communicate the fact that Jesus is Lord or the truth of the gospel is through sight and sound. That's what you do. Yeah. So you are a major threat. Yeah. And yeah. that's a major stronghold over that form of communication. Oh, that's such a brilliant analogy, Carmen. I, I look at Lord of the Rings. You know, I think of Satan's kingdom as being like this huge fortress, and a church is trying to batter, you know, the door down from the front, and filmmakers are going around to the side of his fortress and tacking him from the side. Talk about the film Suing the Devil. Sure. Well, the concept behind it. I explain. Um, Talk about the premise first. What's the premise? Well, quickly, it's about a man who uh, sues the devil for $8 trillion. And I think he should have been sued for more, Carmen, but... <laughs> Probably. Uh, yeah. And uh, the devil, played by legendary actor Malcolm McDowell, right. uh, comes, and he plays the devil, and he shows up to defend himself. So we have this sort of trial of the century happening. Um, legendary actor. Um, oh, yeah. Clockwork Orange. That's a scary guy. <laughs> the first time he comes up on screen, he's a scary guy. Sure. So what's the, what's the premise? Why, did he, why is this guy suing the devil? Oh, well, he's basically a guy who's beaten up in life. Um, he's a backslidden Christian. And through the movie, he grows as a person who understands what the devil is about, the threat that the devil comes to steal and kill and destroy our joy. And uh, according to the latest Gallup poll, 50% of Christians do not believe in the devil. Have you guys heard of that one? And that's pretty pathetic, and it shows the state of Christianity today. 50% of Christians don't even believe in the devil anymore. Um, and when Jesus specifically said, he's a thief, you know, he comes to still kill and destroy, he comes as a roaring lion. Christians need to wake up that, you know, we're under a spiritual attack, and we need to be soldiers, we're, you know. So one of the important things about the film, then, is it really brings an awareness to the the personage of Satan. Yes. And brings him to life as a person. Yeah. Jesus, when he went into the wilderness, he wasn't talking to himself. <laughs> right. He wasn't Carmen. schizophrenic. That's true. That's you know, true. he wasn't um, self-deceived. No. He, he wasn't high on, on crack cocaine. He, <laughs> he was talking to a, another cognizant, you, you, or a cognizant being, or, uh, you know, other dimensional. Real brief, what gave you the idea for this? Well, my mom had passed away last year of cancer. And uh, I had been with her about a year and seven months full time. And I was really angry. Um, and you know, the thing about the, what comes out in this movie, Carmen, is I was angry at God, actually. I wasn't angry at the devil. And then it was like a light bulb just hit me while I was driving down Malibu. And then it was, you know, guess what? You know, Satan, if you were, if you were here right now, I would sue you for, and I think it was eight trillion, I said, or 10 trillion. And um, 
And that's when the light bulb just hit. I said, you know, this would make a great movie idea. And that was the Holy Spirit just saying, you know what, go for it. You have the green light, make the film. Two nights ago, I was in Times Square. I was praying to the Lord for the harvest that he would send more workers into the harvest fields into New York. And I also said, Lord, if you could just bless this film, it would be great. I'm in Times Square. I looked up at the Sony board right after I finished praying and said, your indie film will be a blockbuster. And I just sort of almost fainted. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know, what was that doing on the Sony board? But that's true. That happened, and we're really well. If your film is successful, that means you can make other films. Yeah. That means you can take other people who are talented, yes. who are actors, absolutely, writers, and filmmakers, that, and can employ them to be a, to be filmmakers as a ministry. Yes. So we pray we're that your film that. is successful, sure. and that we will keep you in our prayers, and we'll make sure that you are you are successful, and that God prepares the table before you in the presence of your enemies. Thanks, Carmen. God bless you. God bless you, my brother. Thank you, Carmen.